Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Kiss Star with Jesus, brought to you by COP USA. I am your host, Nina AJ. Hi, hi, children. Hi, 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 hi children. children. Hello, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good news. Christ Amen. died for me and, and you. you. So all welcome in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious ones, in the month of June, we are in June. Oh, wow. Time flies. We thank God for his grace and his mercies upon our lives. Precious ones, in the month of June, we'll be talking about a book. A book is, is pretty much our apostle, um, Michael Ajimana Malakum, who wrote the book, right? I know most of you know this book. You've seen it. We have the volume one and we have the volume two. And it is, the, the, the title is, is he my father's God or my own God? Is he my father's God or my own God? The apologetics for children. The apologetics for children. Precious ones, if you need one of this book, let me know and I will know you want, okay? But there is so much that you can learn in this book. Some of the topics that we've been treating we, we, we read it and we, we, we took them from this book, but it's still what? It's not the Bible, actually, but you can find good news. You can find good stuff from this book, The Apologetics for Children. And today we'll be talking, the month of June, we'll be talking about some of the topics from this book. But before we do that, um, we have precious children that have zoomed in, just like you at home watching us. Hello, we love you all. You are welcome. Call mommy and daddy, um, auntie, grandma, grandpa, let, come sit down and let us all have some fun. We are here to have fun. Anytime you see us, we are all here to have fun. We learn through what? Having fun. I know some of you saw the Kahoot game. At the end of June, we'll be playing the Kahoot game with this, the topics that we will learn from the book. So precious ones, we want you to stay put. But what is your name? I, oh, I know you have, oh, yes. Yes, I know you just told me your name. Fantastic name, amazing name. We'll also allow the precious ones here that have zoomed in to tell us their name. And then after that, we will move on and learn our memory verse. How about that? Okay, so we'll start with the first person. Hi, my name is Darren Afoy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Declan Afoy from Cleveland District. Hello, my name is Benedict Bo from the Cincinnati District. Hi, my name is James Asay, I'm performing, and I'm from the PIWC New York District. Hi, my name is Esther Morgan, and I am from the Patterson District. Hi, my name is Joel Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Precious ones, you are all welcome. You are all welcome. Beautiful names. You are welcome. As we said earlier, we are here to have fun. But before we go on further, we just want to learn our memory verse. We want to learn our memory verse for the week. It is always important for us, precious ones, to learn our memory verse at all times because it helps us a lot. And by so doing, it helps you to know some of the stories and good words to use when you are in trouble, when you need words to encourage yourself, right? So our memory verse for this week is... 2 Timothy chapter 3, I think I'm a typo error, I missed the second, by 2 Timothy um, chapter 3 verse 16, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, and I read, all scripture is God brief, and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, amen. Amen. Can amen. we say it together, please? One, go. Second, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is God read, and it's useful for teaching, teaching, correcting, training, righteousness. Amen. 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 So, kids at home, don't forget, practice your memories, go over it, and call a friend and share with them, and share with them. Our main topic is, is he my father's God or my own God? 
And our subtopic for this afternoon is the Bible, the word of God, the Bible, the word of God. Is it my father's God or my own God? The Apologetics for Children's uh, for Children, Volume 1. Our lesson will be on page 9 to 14. So those that have your books with you, you can open to that. And um, the book was written by Apostle um, Michael Ajibanamwakum, COPUSA um, National Head. He wrote this book. Very amazing, powerful book. So spend time, precious ones, and read the book. But before we do that, uh, we'll open, we'll go straight to the book, actually. Let's go straight to the book. And um, Benedict will do the introduction and then we'll go ahead and we will read, um, we'll start our lesson. Remember, our lesson for today is God's word, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, right? Let's begin to think the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Actually, so when you, what, when we go to school, right? And your teachers ask you to go buy test books and other stuff and story books to read. Why do you think they tell you guys to buy those books or buy test books? Yes, James. So you have something to like study for, or that's what your lessons might be based on in school. Good. So that's what your lesson will be based on in school, right? So pretty much that book or that test book is to is there to what? Give you information to inform you for that academic year. So that when you are being assessed, when they assess you at the end of that school year, they expect that you perform and you do good. You use that information that you've acquired. They just wanna test you to make sure you understand it, right? Same way, same way, precious ones. Same way when it comes to what? Uh, we Christians the Bible, right? Who knows why we study the Bible? Who knows why we study the Bible? Who knows why we study the Bible? Yes, Joel. To teach us right and wrong in life. And also it teaches that right and wrong in life. Fantastic. God bless you. Yes, who else? Who else? Yes, Benedict. I actually had a couple points, but one of my points was first we study the Bible to learn about Jesus and have a better bond with him. Learn about Jesus and have a better bond with him. Yes, Esther. Great job. Fantastic answer, Benedict. Yes, Esther. The Bible um, helps us to lead um, us into the right path and not teach us wrong, but right. The Bible directs our path. It leads us so that we don't walk, go astray, right? It directs our path. Well, I do not want us to, 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 to carry you and I don't want us to jump over. So let's go to the book and we'll get to where we, I just wanted to wet your taste a little bit. So Mr. Benedict, if you don't mind, can you start with us? And then we'll, as we go through, we'll come to why is it important as precious children to read your Bible? Okay, so now, Benedict, can you do the introduction for us and then we can start? Yes, I will. One Friday afternoon, 13-year-old Royal and her two classmates, Anna and Unique, met at the cafeteria during lunch break. Out of curiosity, Royal wanted to find out whether Unique was a Christian or not. Unique, you look very religious to me. What, what do you mean by that? Are you asking whether I go to church? Yes. Which church do you belong to? I'm sorry. I'm not interested in any church. Oh, I see. My parents and siblings are Christians, and we go to church all the time. Does your family believe in God? My dad told me that there are so many gods. The God of atheism, Buddhism, um, Hinduism, Islam, uh, Islam, and Christianity. There seem to be too many gods instead of one. It's confusing, and that is why we decided not to worship any particular god. I understand, and get where you are coming from. My friend Nana bought me a Bible and convinced me to read it. And from that time, God has become my father and friend. Interesting. 
Can you tell me more about this Bible stuff then? I am interested in how God can be one's father and friend at the same time. Unique. I can't wait to tell you about the Bible. But before then, can I share a story with you? Of course. Of course. I'm so glad you wanted to know more about the Bible and God. The word Bible comes from the Latin and Greek word, meaning book, an appropriate name, since the Bible is the book for all people and for all times. It is a book like no other, and it falls into a class by itself. There are 66 different books all together in the Bible. The Bible has many different styles of writing. The writing styles include narration, history, fiction, law, poetry, and prophecy. The Bible describes the origin of human beings in the Garden of Eden. It also narrates how man fell into sin and out of fellowship with God. The 66 books of the Bible are divided into two main parts. The Old Testament, which comprises 39 books, and the New Testament, which is made up of 27 books. The Old Testament books are divided in four parts, namely. God bless you, Royal. God bless you, Unique. Hmm. So the Old Testament books are divided into four parts, namely, yes, James. Can you tell us one? Oh, the Pentateuch. Yeah. What does it say? The Pentateuch is five books that Moses wrote. Can you tell us what they like, are? Like Genesis and Exodus, Genesis, Leviticus, yeah. and Deuteronomy. God bless you, James. Fantastic. God bless you, Nick. God bless you, Nana. Yes, um, yes, Benedict. What's the second one? The second one is historical. There are 12 historical books, which are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd King, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Hmm. Okay, God bless you. Yes, what's, what's the third one and what's the fourth one? Um, Darren, Declan? Okay, so the third one is the poetical, and those consist of five books, which are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and finally Songs of Solomon, or Songs of Songs. And the fourth one is the prophetical book, which includes, there are 17 books in the prophetical books, namely Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zapania, Hegai, Zachariah, and Malachi. God bless you. Fantastic, amazing, precious words at home. I know you are getting along with us, right? Fantastic. And I know you've been saying yours too. Now, the New Testament has three parts. What are they? The New Testament has three parts. What are they? Yes, Benedict, you can tell us one. Again, they have historical fiction. Historical. There are five books, namely Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Who can share with us the second one? Yes. Yes, Darren. The second one for the New Testament are the epistles that were written by Paul. There are actually 13 of them which are Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and finally Philemon. And who can share the last part with us? Yes, Declan. The last part is there are nine epistles that were, restored, that were written, that were not written by Paul, namely Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, First and Second Third John, Jude and Revelation. But it is worth mentioning that some authors believe the book of history, the book of 
Hebrews was written by the Apostle Paul. Wow, fantastic, great information. Unique, you can continue. The Old and New Testament complement each other and both provide the necessary information to know about God and to have a loving relationship with him. Simply put the Old Testament is the story of a nation and the New Testament is the story of a man. The nation was God's way of bringing the man Jesus Christ into the world. Wow, you have gotten me really interested in this Bible stuff. So let me ask you a silly question. Hmm, who wrote this Bible and what makes you think it comes from God? Good question, Unique. You know something? One great thing about God is that he uses people as vessels through whom he works. This makes it possible for everyone to relate. To answer your question, the Bible was written by about 40 different authors who were inspired by God himself over approximately 15,000 years. Isn't that amazing? The authors included kings like David and Solomon, prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah, priests like Ezra, government officials like Daniel, farmers like Amos, and shepherds like Moses. Other authors were fishermen like Peter, physicians like Luke, and lawyers like Paul. Because the authors were inspired by God, even though they had different backgrounds, their writings have a common theme and an incredible unity, which undoubtedly makes the Bible infallible in everything it addresses. God bless you. Yes, unique. This is indeed interesting. Can you tell me what the purpose of the Bible is? I am glad you are asking to know more about the Bible. The primary purpose of the Bible is a message about salvation. More specifically, it describes God's love for humanity. The Bible reveals the direction God wants man to take and also helps us to know what he expects of us. The Bible gives you the leading, you the leading to receive salvation that comes by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior and Lord. The Bible teaches us what is true and makes us realize what is wrong and right. God uses it to communicate to us daily and to train us to be good people. Amen, fantastic reading. God bless you, Esther, God bless you, Joel. That was an amazing reading. We love that. God richly bless you. Um, Precious ones, I know you've also enjoyed reading the book, right? We not, we only just didn't read. We've learned so much. Uh, we've gotten to know that uh, in the Old Testament, the, the, the Bible has been breaking down into four parts. And then when you come to the New Testament, it has also been broken down. So precious ones, we want you to spend time at home and go through and learn more. There's so much that you can learn from the book. But we've been talking about the Bible, right? We've been talking about the Bible. Why, why, why is it so important for us as precious ones to read our Bible? Is the Bible just a normal book, like a friction or non-friction book? Or is it like a newspaper or like a magazine, a journal that you just pick or an article or you just go online and just read? What, how do you see the Bible? So it is an open discussion. And pretty much from all that Joel and Esther read, it was about two kids that are trying to what, share knowledge about the Bible. Why the other child believes that um, there, there's no need for them to read the Bible and with the other one trying to, to pretty much share the word of God with the other child. Now, why is it important? What, what is, how do you follow the Bible? It's an open discussion and we'll get to anyone. We'll get, I can call anyone and we'll get to everybody too. Yes, let's start with James. Let's start with James. 
I wanted to say that we read the Bible because as Christians, it's literally our handbook. Everything there is to know about anything in life is in the Bible. Like there are 66 different books in the Bible and the Bible has topics on everything, how to live your life, punishments for when you do something wrong. There are even laws about, about things like marriage. Even We even learn history from the Bible. Everything that a Christian needs to know, we can literally base our lives off the Bible. And in the real world, when people are reading, in, like they're reading books, when builders are building, they have a handbook. That's where they learn how to build. They go to school, they buy textbooks that give them information. But the Bible isn't just giving you information. It's literally like it has, it, it, it's laid out your life for you. It tells you how children should obey their parents, how parents should treat their children. And even the Bible's real too. Um, in school, we were learning about different um, empires of the world. If you go to the Babylonian empire, there actually was uh, King Darius. And also in the Bible, there's a Darius. If mm -hmm. you go to the, the Greek and um, the Persian wars, you can actually find out that there's a King Xerxes in real life. So if, if the Bible carefully coincides with actual events that have happened in chronological order in history, I'm thinking that the Bible is real. It's pretty real. So we read the Bible because we can base our lives off the Bible. We read the Bible because the Bible, the, 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 um, there's literally a song that says, read your Bible and pray every day. The meaning that God wants us to read our Bible, and we should also read the Bible because it's God's word. No, that it's God's word. Amen. Amen. Fantastic, James. Just point of correction. Do you think you you said that you think the Bible is real? Do you think or you know the Bible is real? I know the Bible is real. <laughs> you know the Bible is real. The Bible is real. It's for real, because with all that you said, right? You've experienced the Bible and you know it is real. Yes, let's go to Esther. First of all, I think that I know the Bible is real because like um, James said, they're all sometimes based on real events. And I also think that the Bible is real because it's based on the truth. It, it says only the truth. It doesn't say any lies. Mm -hmm. It's all true. And there are the authors are all inspired by God. They mm -hmm. all basically um, listen to God. They hear God. They wrote what the Bible says right now. And I agree that the Bible, you should be reading it and also be praying. Amen. Fantastic. Fantastic. God bless you, Esther. One thing you said, though, you see, Esther is saying that what? She agrees with James that we need to read our Bible word every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to. If you want to. You precious ones are amazing, fantastic, great contribution. Yes, Benedict. Yes, so uh, I believe that this is James. The Bible is real. It's infallible. There's nothing wrong about it. And like, we have the Bible as like our guidelines on how to live our life. We read the Bible to study and prepare ourselves for discipline making, ministry, and service. Strictly, 2 Timothy 3, verse chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, it really states this. We study the Bible to transform ourselves, to go from a bad person to a newborn person when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and start using this big book more often. Psalms 9, chapter 19, verse, verse 7 to 11 states this. Also, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12 also states this. And we read the Bible so the devil can't attack us with stuff we don't know about. Like, sometimes you go on phones and Google stuff, we don't know what it is, or like there's a word in the dictionary that you don't know, you word in the or something, but you can't even, you have a dictionary by you. You gotta, you gotta use the Bible, because I'm telling you, the devil will use stuff that you don't know often and have your friends do it. 
if your friends are not Christian, and that's why the Bible says we have to surround ourselves with good friends. So the devil tries to attack us using our friends, we can the our friends can defend against us so we all can be safe as a group. It's all about the chain. One week chain will break the whole thing. So we have to surround ourselves with good people. So the devil doesn't use them to influence us on stuff we don't know. And even if the devil goes straight to us, we have to ask for help. The Bible is there. We have our parents there, our grandmas and grandpas. We have to ask for help if we don't know something. I'm telling you, the devil is going to dig a big hole someday. And someday, you might fall into it, might, might not. I don't know. But God always wants you to jump or skip over that hole. And even if you fall in that hole, you have to mend the hole. What I mean by mend is repent. Now you know that you do something wrong, then you have to go do it again and again and again and keep repenting. I'm telling you right now, God is probably not going to forgive you if you keep going over and over and over again. You have to find some way to stop that addiction or anything from the sin and find a way to break that bond with the devil. And make sure you have the Holy Spirit with you and pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. The devil will grow fears of you because you're always walking with Jesus. The devil fears Jesus. And if you have the Jesus with you, the devil will always fear you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Benedict. The word is like a hammer to convict. That's what Benedict is saying. If you know the word of God, it is your weapon that when the enemy come against you, you can use that word to defend yourself. You can use the word to rebuke. It is my word. It is not my word like fire, declares the Lord. And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Jeremiah 23 verse 29b. It smashes and demolishes for the evil one. That is why, precious ones, we need to know the word. If we don't know the word in the Bible, right? When the enemy comes to you, say, oh, Auntie Nina, you a loser. You also be sitting there and you be telling yourself, yes, I'm a loser. Yes, I'm a loser. Is that what the Bible says about your life? The Bible says that what? I am the way, the truth, and the light. You are a winner. You are not a loser, right? you be the head and not the tail. So when you know the word of God, you will use those words to what? To encourage yourself. And you use those words to let what? To rebuke the devil. The devil, this is coming from you. This is not what the word of God tells me. And what? You can liberate yourself. You can set yourself apart from the lies of the evil one. Now let's go to Darren. We go to Darren, Declan, and I come to um, Joel, and then we go to James. So, Darren. The, when, what um, Benedict was saying reminded me of a very sad story that I don't like to be reminded of. You see, when Jesus died, and one of the soldiers who was there what, uh, realized that truly Jesus was the son of God, but instead of keeping it to himself, he said, this truly was the son of God. Now he's realizing it because God had opened his eyes right now, right then, and the God had used the summer and convicted him to say that truly Jesus was the son of God. Great contribution. Thank you for enough. relating to it. Thank you. God bless. Yes, James, what did you say? I said it took the soldier long enough to actually realize that that was God. I mean, I, don't <laughs> I think know, right? To die for you to realize who he is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens in real life, right? It happens in real life too. Yeah, great contribution. Yes, Declan. You have any contribution or we should move to Joel? Um, I have a contribution. I think that yeah. the Bible is real because if the Bible wasn't real, then basically, how do you know? How do you know who, who created us, when, where, and who? So it, the Bible basically answers the five W's. So everything you need to know about your Christian life, everything for you to know to go to heaven is in the Bible because it says, it, because the Bible is the word to God in the Psalm 119 verse 105, it says that your word is a lamp for my feet and light on my path. And it also teaches us what is real true and make us realize what is wrong and right. It makes us know what is wrong 
and what is right. That is why sometimes, I don't know whether you've been in this situation before, if you've been in this, um, sometimes you know you'll be doing something and you have this small voice telling you that what you're doing is wrong, stop. What you're doing is wrong, stop. And the other voice is telling you, yeah, no, it's right, go ahead, get it done. But you yourself can have a self-check that, no, this is wrong. What I'm doing is wrong, right? Have you been in a situation where you're doing something and you something keep telling you, a voice keep telling you, what you're doing is wrong, stop. What do you think made you even have that self-check that something is wrong? It's the knowledge you have in the Bible, right? That this is wrong and this is right. Just let's take a practical example. Mommy tells you, you've been snacking too much. So from tomorrow, you are not snacking and you walk into the pantry, right? Mommy is upstairs. You go to the pantry, you see all these nice stuff, snacks, different types, right? Um, the, the, the nachos, um, uh, goldfish. There's one that we went for a camp that the kids were fighting over. It's so spicy. Two years ago, we went for a camp. Talkies. Talkies, yeah. Every child was fighting over that. I said, what is so special about this snack, right? You wait, when mommy is not there, you sneak in there and then you go do your own. But as you're doing it, something keeps telling you what you're doing is wrong. What is your you doing is wrong? Why? Because you know the word, your Sunday school teacher, you've read in the Bible that word, it is wrong, right? So you begin to have a self-check. That this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. That is what the Bible, if you read the Bible, sometimes it gives you, most of the time, I would say sometimes, most of the time it gives you a, a what? A self-check that this thing you're doing is what? Against what you have read, against the word of God. Yes, Joel, you want to share anything with us? Sure. Okay. The Bible teaches us like not to go into temptation when the devil is trying to tempt us. And it teaches us what's good and what's bad. And it teaches us punishment of like what happens to people if they didn't obey God and people that um, change other people's lives. The Bible is there to change other people's lives as well. The Bible is there to transform our lives, right? The Bible is there to transform our life. Great contribution, Joel. God richly bless you, fantastic contribution. Yes, James. And when you sang, when you sang the song, sorry, grammar, when you sang the song about reading your Bible and, and um, praying every day if you want to grow, it just reminded me that the Bible also helps you to mature as Christians. Mm -hmm. it, it helps you grow because when actually in the human and actually the um, world, when a baby is born, one way we can tell that the baby is not a baby anymore is if the baby can read. So I like when, the, when a baby's able to read their first word, people make such a big noise and celebration about it because that is like the trademark of growing. So mm -hmm. as Christians, instead of being babies, we have to read the Bible so that we can, people can know that um, we've grown. And there's a difference between reading the Bible and really reading the Bible because I was actually having, um, it reminded me of like when I was going back in school, when I was back in school, there was an atheist uh, on, the, on the bus and so that he read the whole Bible, there wasn't like, it's, it's not a holy book or anything. It, it just struck me as odd because even atheists are reading the Bible. How much more Christians? Uh -huh. And if you watch a movie like God's Not Dead, you can see that the atheist in that movie read the Bible. And even the devil himself read the Bible. So when you read the Bible, you're not just reading the Bible, you're meditating. Because if Jesus hadn't read the Bible, I would I, okay. I'm not God, so I wouldn't say he would have turned stones into bread, and I don't think he would. He would have bowed down. But if 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 it wasn't Jesus, if it was like us, if we if we haven't read the Bible and if we haven't meditated upon it, we can easily be swayed around the devil. Because how does the devil himself know them how to read the Bible? He knows how to read the Bible exactly. to trick you, but you as a Christian should know to read the Bible at the back of your hand, so you can use that against him. So I was just thinking, like, you have to you read the Bible and meditate upon it day and night, day and night. And see, it's it's interesting. The Bible specifically said that when Jesus um, went to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, 
the Bible could have just said he went for 40 days, meaning that there's two separate different times in, in the day. That's why the clock has um, 12 hours and 12 hours. That's why I'm going to say 24 hours. They mean the entire day, meaning the Bible says that every time in your life, yep. two consecutive times in a day, you have to read the Bible. And day, when you wake up, you pray, you read the Bible. At night, when you're going to bed, you read the Bible. And I also wanted to say that the Bible is God's word. It said that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God God. and the word was God. So the Bible isn't as as, like just a book. It's actually God himself. And me and my mom were having a discussion on the Bible. And she said that the Bible was being manifested in the creation because when Jesus said, let there be light, that was his spoken word because he is the word. And when he spoke the word and said, let there be light, it, it wasn't just him creating everything. He spoke the word into the darkness and then there became light. Amen. Great contribution, Amen. James. I don't even know what to say. You've said it all. I don't know how to comment to that, but God richly bless you. Reading our Bible day and night. Our Bible, mommy and daddy don't have to tell you to go read the Bible before you read it, right? The Bible should be your friend. It should be your guide, right? You should always be closer to you. I always say that now kids, uh, Nintendo games and tablets are soap and phones are close to them than even the Bible, right? So we need to clinch to the Bible. We need to fall on the Bible. Even any question, I always say that everything about life, everything about what we're going through now, whether good or bad, is in the Bible. It is in the Bible and it is okay as a child if you don't know. It is okay to ask mom and dad and it is okay when mom and dad don't know, right? We can always find answers to the problem. Auntie Nina don't know it all. If I don't know, I'll tell you right here. I do not know, but I'll go research and I'll be back, right? Let us try and read the Bible day and night, meditate on it. And one thing that I always want, I want to add to what James also said that do not just read the Bible. We shouldn't just do the talk. We should walk it. We should do it. We should walk it. We should do it. When the Bible says obey your parents and what? In the Lord. Meaning do it. Don't just to come and tell Auntie Nina. The Bible says that we should obey our parents. But you know, when money talk, you talk back. Right? In a very, another way, right? Yes. You know what I mean. But. We should do the walk with it. We should walk. We should be the doers of the way, right? And by so doing, uh-huh. your life will be what? Will reflect what? what the, this is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This is the light of mine. Yes, if you walk what you have read, your light will shine. People will see something unique about you, and they will know, and they will know that this is really a child of God. Fantastic contribution. I love all your contribution. God bless you. You are educated and you at home. I know, yes, we've got your contributions too. Fantastic one, great one. We're so proud of all of you. Yes, Darren, we go to Declan and then we go to Benedict. Okay, I just wanted to make a quick side comment about what um, James was saying about when this, like the, the spirit of the devil was among the, the good spirit. It reminded me of um, when he was talking about God's not dead. It reminded me of the story about Job. It says that in the Bible that it, among the angels, the devil was with them. That means that even among good people, the devil is always with us. But mm. if you listen to the word of God, if you also read the word of God, we'll be able to tell those people apart from the good people. Fantastic. The discernment spirit, right? There was a child that was telling me that Auntie Ken, Kate also prophesied. He asked a question. I remember it was one of these recordings we were doing, and the child asked, Auntie Ken, Kate prophesied. Yes. Esther, can Kate prophesy? Yes. They can prophesy. Why why do you say that? Um, because sometimes like 
um, some kids in the Bible, they they have prophesied before, not just adults, yep. but also kids can. Yep, yep, like Samuel, right? Great contribution, fantastic one, Esther. I called you on the spot, but I apologize. Sorry, okay? Yeah, we said discussion. Here, what I'm, I'm trying to say, that God used people in the Bible, like Samuel, right? You remember when God was calling Samuel and Samuel, Samuel, and he didn't even know God was calling him, right? God can use kids. God can what? So if you desire that you want to prophesy, pray and ask God. I always say that, when it comes to children, God always hear you more than even grown-ups, right? That's my ideology, right? Because Jesus loved little children, right? So whatever you desire, ask God for it. God, I desire, I want the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, and God will give it to you. The discernment spirit, God will give it to you. Do you think God will give it to you? Yes, because God used people, little children in the Bible, like Samuel. God can use you, okay? Yes, I'll go to Declan, then go to Benedict, and then come to James, okay? Yes, Declan. Um, so the, an example, so I just wanted to say that Jesus himself said, but in Matthew 14, in Matthew 19, 14, in the King James Version, that, but Jesus said, suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me for, for of such, is the mm. kingdom of heaven. Mm. So God used many people in the Bible, especially small, especially children, like someone children they, like you. Children like you, right? Yes. Children like you. Yes. So children that like that they are like, so they are like a, there's a there's a highly percent chance that one day he's going to use you because one he uses every children for his own purpose. God bless you, Declan. God won't wait till one day. God can use you now. God won't wait till one day. God is using you right now here to send his word to children out there, right? To reach out to every child everywhere in individual homes or wherever they are. So God is using you. God is using every child here. God is using you now. God don't use someday. God uses now. If you avail yourself and you desire, God will use you. Okay, precious ones. Yes, Benedict, and then we'll come to James. I kind of just wanted to bounce off of like Darren's reply about Job. I just want to say that even though the devil is always, usually always among the good people, but there's one thing that we can always know. Our hearts are a mirror. Let's take that in for a minute. Our hearts are a mirror. That means your actions and your behavior reflect your inside. And the good people have a good heart which will reflect different stuff than somebody who's not good or evil. Even if the person is trying to hide it. I know I know some I used to be some friends with some bad people. Until I realized what I was doing, I was friends what I was being with by their actions, the little things that they do. And that's when I was always before I make a friend, I usually kind of quote unquote stop them. Because I want to see if they're a good friend, so I'll always be peeping around, overhearing their comments, and so we're saying, even though I know that's kind of invading their personal privacy, if they're really a good person, I'm going to ask them, hey, what's your name? And someday, have a better bond with them and lure them to Christ. So that's what the comment that I always want to make. Always reflect on how their hearts and the desires and the brain processing to so you know that this person is truly good, or this person is way out there. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, James. I wanted to say that um, you were right when you said that God could use children. And what I also wanted to say was that um, God himself was choosing um, Samuel because he intentionally made sure that Samuel's mother didn't give birth. And what's interesting is when she said that, I'll give my son to you. Mm. If she hadn't said those words, Samuel would never have been born and she never would have had a child again. So and then when you read the Bible, it said that she would always be bringing Samuel each year as he grew older. She would bring him the, the cloak that the priest wore. And, and, and like it was interesting because my mom always says that 
if God favors you and he puts you in a spotlight, it's up to you to show people that you deserve that spotlight. Mm -hmm. Samuel was always his mother um, consecrated him she brought him the clothes he needed and then he was sleeping beside the ark so really he was in the right place at the right time for God to speak to him so I wanted to say that when God chooses you you have to be willing you have to have there has to be a reason why God chose you and Mm -hmm. like like Benedict said it's about your heart now there was a story about this um, lady who was going to give her, she was old, so she was going to give her shop to this younger lady. And then when she heard, and when the young lady got into a fight or something, and she heard what she said, she said she wasn't going to give it to her. I mean, like she like she knew that the heart behind that person, what she spoke from inside of her, what wasn't right. And my like my mom always says that time will tell. When you see people mm-hmm. being so nice and they're always acting like saints, my mom says, <laughs> I have to learn. always acting like saints. All you have to do is give them a little time. And you'll see whether they're true or they're they're a wolf in sheep's clothing, and and that and that simile is a metaphor. Sorry, I'm not a professor here, so that <laughs> metaphor is it's it's actually very ironic because a wolf kills sheep. We for so like we have wolf in sheep's clothing all around us, and and what's weird is that they said a wolf in sheep's clothing, meaning that wolf. Mm-hmm is being surrounded by sheep. That wolf yeah. is looking like a sheep. That wolf is even talking like a sheep and it's stalking. And that's even more dangerous because when a wolf is hunting, it, it doesn't take the time to socialize with the sheep. It doesn't take the time to befriend the sheep. But when you have a wolf in sheep's clothing with you, it's even more dangerous because you don't know how evil that person is. So I was just going to say that Benedict was right about um, the heart that you have. Amen. The heart that you have. And what you said, James, there's a story in the Bible about what? Cain and Abel. You remember? Yeah, Cain and Abel. Where the heart, they were going to give what? Thanksgiving unto the Lord, right? The heart behind what they did. God accepted one. And what? God did not, God rejected the other one. But what happened at the end? So everything is about the heart. The heart, what is attached to what you're doing? right? The motive behind what you're doing, that is the most important thing. God bless you. Great contribution. Uh, whose hand was that? Um, Declan. Yeah. So I and just want to come to you, Benedict. So I just wanted to say that um, the devil is like a, war, a roaring lion. I mm. think that this is in first uh, Corinthians somewhere there, but then in the it says that the devil is like a roaring lion that is trying to eat you into his flesh so that you might be living in the sense. Huh? So you might be, so you might, in your mind, you might think that you are fine. You are the most perfect person ever. And then when you go to, when you are, then very soon you start to realize it because of how the days have been everything. Even sometimes, that my dad said a story that about the devil hunting. My dad said that one day you might be sleeping. You have the, and this was an example. The person had a Bible, or you might have a Bible on your on your bed, but then you don't need a Bible to be to be to the Bible to be to the devil. You need the scriptures in the Bible. So you might be sleeping and then you're thinking that you're fine, but then the devil never sleeps. He's always awake trying to get some people. God bless you. God bless you. Can you open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 14 to 16? Yep. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 14 to 16. And Declan, you can read for us. We are talking about the Bible, the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible, yes, the word of God. Mm-hmm. Second Timothy chapter three, the verse 14 to 16 from the NIV Bible. Not everyone has reached there yet. While evil do, while evil doers and imposters go, will go from bad to worse, deceiving you and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have continue in what you have. Sorry, I did from the verse 13, the verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know 
those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you know the holy scriptures mm. which are what to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God's breathers and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Amen. 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 But then I just wanted to read the verse 17 also. It says, so that the servant of God may be totally equipped for every good work. Amen. 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 Yes, Benedict. The verse 17 really pulls out something out to me. The, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It brings back, that tied back to the heart comment that I made earlier, earlier that if you don't have a good heart and God finds you, because God is going to use everybody now or someday later in the future. He's going to use somebody, and that's why the Bible says, or do you prepare? The Bible even says what? We do not know the day or hour the Lord Jesus Christ may come. And that really been something up to me because I thought one one day as a kid, I was told not to do something bad, but I thought that if you did something bad and do it again, like you'll get better. But the thing is, my mom told me that you get worse and you get stuck in the cycle. And what this cycle what I'm trying to pull out here is you have to be thoroughly equipped because you don't want to be an easy target for the devil. And like a cheat who doesn't know her shepherd. You can get lost out there and the shepherd can say, hey, yo, over here. And like, who are you? I'm going to walk him and say, over here, yes. Come here, my little meat. Act one, like, oh, yummy. Looks like this, what shepherd's over there? And you devour, you need to be, you need to be something that's hard to lock on. You need to be something that's hard for the devil to avoid. Because once the devil gets a hold of you, a good hold of you, it's going to be a cycle. Because the thing I was doing is, like, a, a police officer told me not to drink beer. I thought if you drink more of it, you get better, but instead you get worse. And you get stuck in that cycle. Once the devil pulls you in that loop, it's going to get harder and harder to break out. And that's why I'm telling you guys right now, you have to be equipped and really know the Bible. So when the imposter... When all the crewmates are here and the imposter is trying to get it to you, you now you have a way to get out. Because God always provides a way to get out. Even if you get stuck in the loop, there's always a way to get out. And that's why I always say, don't get stuck in the loop. Just do it. Just do the right thing so nothing bad happens to you and you're always with God in the end. Amen. God bless you. Great contribution. Precious ones. We've been talking about the word of God. And we've been now. Precious ones, we know you know that the word of God, the Bible is not an ordinary book for you to, to just read and just put it down. It's not a magazine. It's not a fiction book. It's not a nonfiction book. It's, the, it's not like a poem book for you to read. It is a real, for real book. I use the word for real. It is a word that is a book that when you go, when you are sad and you go and read, you'll be happy. When you have no hope and you go read the Bible, you will have hope because he brings hope. God brings hope to the hopeless. You see, when you read the Bible, I always tell children that God, God grants wisdom. And as parents go to work, children's work is to go to school, right? You need wisdom and you serve a God that can give you wisdom. All you have to do is to ask, right? Ask God, there's nothing that is too hard for God. But ask God, when you go to God and ask for knowledge, God will not tell you that, hey, it's not appropriate at this time. God will grant you wisdom, right? What grant God will not grant to you is a car. Because what? You can't drive, right? So God won't do that. But God can maybe bless your family, your dad and mom with it, so that you can benefit from that. Right, precious ones. Let us spend time to read the Bible. The Bible is real. There's everything in the Bible. Now, precious ones, we are bringing our lesson to a close. Now, share with us. Share with us. Tell us what you have learned. If any story, whatever we, if you have a story that you want to relate to what we have talked about about the Bible, you can share with us as we wrap up. But James, your hands have been up for a while. I'll call James and then I'll come to Joel. Okay. So this is the last round for everyone. 
and then we are bringing it to an end, okay? Yes, James. So when Benedict said that you have to be equipped, the Bible says that you have to go out with the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And again, when me and my mom were talking, I'm going to be referencing my mom a lot. So get ready, people. <laughs> when me and my mom were having a discussion about like the sword, the shield and the armor, everything, she just told me that all of that is the word of God. So that, re that was really interesting because have you ever heard of a soldier who goes into war without his gun or without his armor? So that mm -hmm. means as Christians, if, if, if we like don't have the armor with us, we're like a sack of potatoes to the devil. Mm -hmm. He can just come and he can, he can do whatever he wants. But when we have the sword, we can fight him. When we have the shield, we can defend ourselves from his attacks. When we have the um, armor, we can absorb the attacks and we can like protect and defend ourselves. So I just wanted to say that the word, another reason we can read the word is so that um, we can bring protect and bring protection and I also wanted to say that when we read the word God speaks to us when I was saying meditation mm. when I was one thing I was saying is like when you're reading you're just reading something you're saying like where the words are that's that's what you're reading your brain is just looking at the letters and receiving information but when you meditate on the word God speaks to you and you feel when he speaks to you because when you feel it he, he says something to you you would be like, wow, if I, if I, if I wasn't been paying attention, I would never have read this dimension on whatever you were reading. I never would have picked this up. So when you read the word and you meditate, God speaks to you. And then when my dad is, um, he's, he, he's a pastor, <laughs> when he um, prepares his messages, and sometimes I find him, he always, he doesn't really spend time writing per se. He's always in the Bible. Sometimes I can just see him doing this. He's just reading the Bible. He's like so into it, meaning because he's waiting for God to speak to um, him so that he can preach his word. Amen. 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 God bless you. I'm so happy, James, that you've learned so much this afternoon. And God bless you for sharing with us too. And you precious ones at home too. Yes, Joel. I learned, uh, I learned a lot today. I learned that the Bible isn't just a book, but it can help us with our lives. It can, it can teach us right and wrong. And then young people can also prophesy, and they can allow very good examples like Daniel, David, and I'm Joa, speak up a little bit, okay? I can't hear. I learned a, I learned a lot today, and I learned that when we read the Bible, it will, it will help us do right, like help us learn from right and wrong. And then um, there's been many good examples that everyone here has said today. And I also enjoyed my time here. I am so happy you had fun today, Joel. I've enjoyed you too. God bless you for coming. God bless you. Fantastic. You've, you've been amazing. God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. The word of God is so important. It's real. Precious ones, before I come to the rest of the precious ones here, have you realized that in, the, in, in, in some of the Bible stories that we've learned in Sunday school, God always comes in to make the impossible possible? Remember when he turned water into wine? Remember when Elisha, right, made the axe head float? He beat what the law of fixes, right? Things that doesn't make sense to man that is what our God do. He does, excuse me. And then what? They are in the Bible. That is why when I sit down to read the Bible, sometimes it's not that I'm just reading for just reading, but I get so involved and the, the, the story becomes so involving. I want to keep reading and keep reading, right? When you get, I was telling my son that there was, there was a month I told him, Operation, read the Bible. I gave him the whole of Romans to read, right? He didn't want to do it. I'm like, you're going to read Romans. Yeah, you're going to do it, right? And he started reading it. And it got to a time. One time I couldn't, I told him when you're reading, you need to come sit here in the office. I have to see you read, right? One time I couldn't, I came there, he wasn't there. I was like, okay, let me go and look for this guy. And when he was in his room, sitting there, reading the Bible, I said, huh? You read in the Bible? He said, yeah, I just couldn't finish. Um, I just couldn't stop because after Roman, I decided to go to Proverbs to read. I was like, huh, why? So you can read a book 
or a scripture, and that will kind of help. Uh, it kind of motivates you or whet your appetite to read something else. And sometimes it's not, it's not just you being whetting your appetite or you felt like it's the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit will motivate you, will stir you up to read more. He's him that is talking to you. That's why sometimes when you are down, somebody can come say encouraging words to you, right? To, to motivate you, right? So we precious ones, we have to be children that are what? That positive things comes out of our mouth. Words of encouragement and no words that would demean us. Words that would dumb the spirit of another child. But it would be words that would make the person feel proud of themselves, right? Great contribution, precious one. God bless you. And I'm so happy we all learned something this afternoon. Esther, do you have something to share with us? Benedict? Yes, Darren? Oh, okay. You do? Okay. You okay. can go ahead. So today I learned a lot today from both reading the book, discussing it. And one thing I learned is that the Bible speaks the truth and only the truth. Mm. It helps us lead us into the right path. Um, it pretty much guides us. It's pretty much a handbook, like what James said. And I think that we should read the Bible more like every day and also pray every day. And I also learned that the Bible is like a hammer to convict. In Jeremiah 23 through 29, it says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks to pieces. So it smashes and demolishes evil. So it's like the same thing. Like if you don't have like any armor, like James said, um, we pretty much like be easy for the devil to attack you. But if you're like, you have the armor, like you have the Bible, you read it a lot and you pray, then you're pretty much going to win. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Esther. Fantastic contribution. Yeah, like a sack potato. That's a fantastic contribution. Fantastic contribution. God bless you. I'm happy you've learned so much and we've enjoyed you to thank you for coming. Um, we'll go to Declan, Darren, and then Benedict. You will wrap it up for us, okay? okay. Yes, Darren. I, Declan wants me to go first. So, no. Yeah, yeah, Declan, you definitely want me to go first. So I'm going first. Okay, <laughs> I learned that God compares his word to many things such as fire which is to refine, just like Esther told us about right now. And then on or also a lamp, which would help us guide, because without a lamp and, and you are walking in the darkness, how are you supposed to know where to go? And without a fire, which is for refreshment, if you got hypothermia, how are you supposed to get warm again? All of those things. So God compares his word to all of those things. And this is God comparing them. That means that his word is like everything, anything you can think of. God's word is like it. That's God bless I you. Great contribution. Yes. Um, um, so on. I learned a very long term, but then just to make a very, it very short. <laughs> I just, the, I learned that the Bible teaches us what is true and makes us realize what is wrong and right. Mm. Also, then if you have, please, if you have time, you can read Second Timothy chapter two, the verse twenty-two to twenty-six. Then Second Timothy chapter three, to the verse, to the verse five. Okay, we will read it. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Benedict. The overall, I learned that you always got to be on your guard and always have to like learn your memory verses and really read the Bible. It's not really the Bible that really helps you fight, but the knowledge of the Bible. Because I'm telling you, let's say you move, and like, let's say like you're going somewhere, and some unknown person tries to attack you, and like you don't, your Bible's not on you. You gotta learn, you gotta know it up here, so that you'll be able to fight wherever you go. So, so you don't look like McDonald's or some Burger King to the devil. God bless you. God bless you, precious ones. We have come to the end of our program tonight, today. Um, we've talked about the Bible. We've been talking about the Bible. Our scripture reading was 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. 
The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The word of God comes to encourage us when we are sad. It brings us hope to the hopeless. We have learned from the Bible and, and from the apologetic books. Do you, I'm, I'm sure you guys are really, now you know there's a lot of stuff in this book, right? Yes. Yeah, so if you need more information, you can read it too. This is just an addition. The book is not the Bible. It is an addition to what we can read um, in the Bible as well, okay? And then when you go to the word of God, when you go to the Bible to read, you don't have to read a whole long verses. Maybe just even take one verse and then read it and think and meditate on it. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. The Holy Spirit will bring you a deeper understanding into what you have read. And then me, sometimes when I read, I don't understand some of them, but you go back and revisit it another time, it begin to make sense to you. May the Lord bless us all. We know we have learned so much. Now we all know how important it is as precious ones to keep your word, your Bible close to you. The, the, the Bible is your guide. Everything we do, in what we can find it in the Bible. There's nothing that cannot be found in the Bible. Everything about parenting, child knowledge, wisdom, wisdom. Who gave wisdom? God granted Solomon wisdom. So when you pray as precious will say, God, I desire that wisdom that was granted to Solomon, King Solomon. I need that same wisdom. And God will grant you. all you need to do. The Bible says that ask and it shall be given unto you. You need to ask. Ask, 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 ask. And you can only know these when you read the Bible and get to know that word. My Bible says that I can ask anything and God will give it to me. Anything, but God will give it to you at the appropriate time, okay? Ask appropriate things and God will grant them unto you. If you are not driving, don't go ask God for a car, okay? If you don't know how to do the airplane, right? Don't go say to God, I need one, okay? James, your hand is up, and Esther. I just so, wanted to say that um, people should have an excuse for saying that you don't want to read the Bible because their Bibles from different. Their the, the Bibles for every person. Their Bibles for children that have like pictures. So people have actually made reading the Bible fun. There, there are even audio people who read the Bible to you, and then they have all sorts of sound effects and cool people like reading and different different voices. So. And they're even for adults who want to like really study the Bible. There are study Bibles. I literally said it. Study the Bible. Study Bible. They even have master study Bibles if you want a deeper um look into the Bible. And then there are commentaries, which are people who've read the Bible and they're explaining it. So basically, yeah, there are Bibles for different ages. I even have a youth Bible. So there are, there are Bibles for like every person, for a kid, a mom, a dad. So you should really look into getting a Bible that's suited for you and you can understand it because there's no point in reading something. You don't know half of what it means. Get a um, translation that you can understand and, and it makes yes. sense to you. God bless you. God bless you for your contribution. Yes, uh, Miss Esther. Um, for example, like when you're like, um, like, let's say that you pray um, that you hope that you like ace the, a math test, for example, you also have to do your part to study. It's mm. not God that does it. It's not like he does it all. You don't have to study. You don't have to do anything. It's also you that has to have a part in it. You have to study. You have to learn all the things for that math test and just pray and hope that you will ace the test. Mm. Mm, that's a good one, Esther. That's really a good one. You need to study and God will help you pass, right? If you pray and desire and you don't do the work, you won't pass, you won't ace it. So great contribution, Esther. That's a good one. You need to what? Study your material and then ask God. God will reward, will remind you, will, will make you what? remember everything that what you study. But if you didn't study, how can God would help you or remind you in the test room? As what? I know some of you are in the testing mode, right? In school. Study hard. Study hard. God says we are the best. We are what? We are the head and not the tail. God didn't create anybody dumb, right? No God, no nobody, no child of God is. So we need to work hard, ask for wisdom, study, and God will work. The Holy Spirit will remind us when the time comes. We thank God for, 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 for all of you's life. We have come to the end of our program. As we all know, the month of June, the month of June, 
we are appreciating all our fathers, right? Father's Day recording is coming up. Um, so precious one, get ready, write up your messages, and let's appreciate and celebrate our fathers, our fathers in our lives. We love you, and I know, you see, daddy got you ready to even zoom in here. You have to appreciate daddy. So precious ones, don't forget to kiss time with Jesus, um, the Pentecostal puppet on national level that is coming up. Get ready. It's on regional level right now. And I know some of them are also doing on local. All of you, yes, you, you, yeah, you watching me. You can all take part. We are all doing it. We are learning through fun. So let's just do it all. God bless all of you. May the Lord, may the good Lord help us to always cling to his word, cling to the Bible. And then at the end of it all, glory and honor will be unto him. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you safe till we see you next week. Is bye for now. Bye. We love you all. Bye. 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 Bye.